Welcome back to Monitors Unboxed. A couple of weeks ago, I checked out the LG 32GR93U and discovered it was quite a good 32-inch 4K 144Hz gaming monitor. So today, I'm back to check out its smaller brother from the same product family, the 27GR93U, which will hopefully bring the same excellent qualities down to a smaller 27-inch form factor. At the same time, there's a ton of competition right now in the 27-inch 4K monitor space, so LG has a lot of work ahead of them to ensure this particular option is the best choice. On the spec sheet, the 27GR93U is a pretty typical gaming monitor. It packs a 27-inch 3840x2160 IPS LCD panel with a maximum refresh rate of 144Hz. It supports adaptive sync technology, both FreeSync and G-Sync are listed here, 1 millisecond rate of response times, 95% DCI-P3 coverage, and even Display HDR400 certification, although there's no true HDR hardware support here. Several of the 27GR93U's competitors offer a very similar suite of hardware, so crowning a winner will come down to performance and tuning. I also found the pricing of the 27GR93U a little strange. In the US, the monitor is $700, which is on the more expensive end of the scale for a 27-inch 4K monitor these days. But in Australia, you can pick one up for just $800 Aussie, and in the UK, it's priced at just £550. Now, when converting $700 US into dollar dues, we normally would face a price around $1,200 locally, so it's pretty surprising to see it available for just $800. This prices it at pretty much the same level as the popular Gigabyte M28U in Australia and the UK, while those in the US are faced with a $200 premium. Not sure what's going on there, that's quite an extreme regional discrepancy. In terms of design, the 27GR93U continues LG's current style trends and seems to blend in a few elements from their 27-inch OLED monitor, such as an additional strip below the monitor's chin. Most of the outer surfaces are grey plastic, which looks fine, and I like the rear design with its central hexagonal box and patterned rear panel. There's a bit of RGB LED lighting integrated into the sides of the box, not a crucial feature, but something some gamers will enjoy. The stand uses two prongs for legs and a central pillar with average sturdiness. We're getting height, tilt and pivot ergonomic adjustment with a great range of height, and the stand legs don't occupy heaps of desk space. The bezel size on the front though is a little larger than what I've seen on some of LG's previous 27-inch monitors without being a deal breaker. One thing I really love about LG's monitor designs are the easy to access ports on the rear. We get one DisplayPort 1.4 with DSC, two HDMI 2.1 ports and a two port USB hub. The HDMI 2.1 ports are 48 gigabits per second so they have the best compatibility with various sources. The OSD is controlled through a directional toggle along the bottom edge of the display, and inside we get LG's typical feature set. This includes a good range of color controls, crosshairs, an FPS counter, black stabilizer, and hardware calibration support. There's also the ability to disable deep sleep and DSC in the monitor settings, which are nice compatibility features that we don't always get. The 27GR93U has four overdrive settings to test, the first of which is overdrive off, which gives us a look at native panel performance. An average response time near 10 milliseconds and cumulative deviation above 500 suggests this mode probably won't be used by many gamers, so let's turn our attention to the normal mode. Here we see much more usable performance for a 144Hz monitor with a 6.76 millisecond response time average next to no overshoot and cumulative deviation below 500. It's not the fastest experience, but generally looks good with limited artifacts. The fast mode though does improve things further, now we have a 5 millisecond average response time, a small but negligible amount of overshoot, and cumulative deviation is the best we've seen yet. So for gamers targeting around 144Hz, the fast mode is well tuned for that. What I would avoid though is the faster mode. This mode has horrific inverse ghosting artifacts that are extremely noticeable, and it's likely the mode was only included to advertise a 1 millisecond response time. I don't expect anyone will be using this mode in practice. For variable refresh gamers, there are two ways you can go here. The fast mode holds up pretty well, with around a 5 millisecond average response at all refresh rates. As we move to lower refreshes, the level of inverse ghosting does increase. It's at 100Hz and lower, where I felt it was somewhat noticeable, but for high refresh rate gamers, the fast mode is quite viable if you want a small clarity gain over normal. But for most people, I would recommend the normal mode. The differences at 144Hz are small, and the level of overshoot is low across all relevant refresh rates, which I think is key, especially as on a 4K monitor, you're more likely to be utilizing the mid to lower parts of the range. In my opinion, this monitor does have a single overdrive mode experience, and you'll be satisfied with the level of clarity from 144Hz to 60Hz using the normal mode. 
Compared to other monitors, the 27GR93U delivers a good experience using the fast mode at 144Hz, but it's not all that different to other options. It's similar to the Inzone M9 from Sony and slightly better tuned than its predecessor, the 27GP950. And there's not a lot in it between this and popular competitors like the Gigabyte M28U. Yes, the M28U is around one millisecond faster overall, but also comes with more than double the inverse ghosting rate. It depends what sort of bounce you like as to which one comes out on top, I think they are similar. We also see good results in average performance. The 27GR93U delivers 25% better performance than the 27GP950 using optimal single overdrive mode experience settings, which is a good result that sees it perform very much like the 32GR93U. Other monitors are a bit more overshoot heavy, especially those based on the 28-inch Interlux panel used in the Gigabyte M28U and others. So while they are faster, they do produce more artifacts on average. For better insight into this, we'll have to assess cumulative deviation, so let's look at that now. A common trend we've noticed across a lot of recent monitor releases, especially those using IPS panels, is that on average, performance is pretty similar. Tuning can be a bit better for different scenarios like higher or lower refresh rates, more or less overshoot, but in general, whether you get a 27GR93U or M28U or M27U, they all deliver a very similar experience at the moment. There are a few outliers either way. The 27GR93U is 14% better than the MSI274 UPF, for example, but largely we see results in a 10% band between 500 and 550 for modern 4K IPS. To achieve better performance, you'll have to go OLED, which naturally dominates these charts, or some of the premium high refresh rate monitors we've seen, like the ASUS PG27AQN. Faster IPS LCD tech is possible, it's just not being used for this class of 4K monitor right now. The 27GR93U is a good monitor for fixed 120Hz gaming, though again it offers a pretty similar experience to other monitors with similar specs. A little less overshoot than the M28U, a little better tuned than the 27GP950, at 60Hz, it's again quite similar. Performance is superior to that of the 27GP950, and LG are once again able to prioritize a low overshoot experience, something you cannot achieve on the M28U. Like with its 32-inch brother, there is no backlight strobing support here, so let's move on to input lag. It's good to confirm the 27GR93U offers a low processing delay, which allows it to have similar input latency to other 144Hz LCD gaming monitors. This is fine for regular gamers, though if you are particularly latency sensitive and want the best experience for competitive play, it might be better to sacrifice resolution to increase refresh rate and grab something 1440p 240Hz at a similar price. Power consumption is very good, a clear upgrade over past generation models like we now have seen from the MSI 274UPF, Gigabyte M27U and the LG 32GR93U. The previous model, the 27GP950, was consuming 38 watts to display a 200 nit image. Now that's been reduced to 28 watts for the 27GR93U. A good improvement. The 27GR93U is a wide gamut monitor with typical color space coverage coming in at 94%, so nothing overly unusual, though it isn't quite as wide as the 27GP950 that hit 98% coverage. This means that for total Rec 2020 coverage, the new model has around 71% coverage versus 76% for the old model, but the new model is still good and in the range of other monitors we've recently been recommending. As for factory calibration, the 27GR93U comes with decent grayscale performance out of the box without being especially amazing. The CCT curve is relatively flat and gamma is good, leading to respectable delta E averages. However, we see the usual issue with oversaturation. This is a wide gamut display with no sRGB clamp enabled by default, so regular SDR content that expects an sRGB gamut is expanded up to the P3 range, which leads to oversaturation. The level of oversaturation here isn't disastrous. Saturation is boosted a little bit, but we don't see crazy skin tones or things like that, which have been issues on other monitors with even wider gamuts. Compared to other monitors, factory grayscale performance is above average and a small improvement on the 27GP950. It's not quite as good as the M28U, but better than the M27U and other products in this price range. Color checker performance is pretty typical though, not as good as the M28U, better than the M27U, and similar to the 27GP950, so standard stuff for a gaming monitor. LG do include an sRGB mode and they don't lock white balance controls in this mode, which is a massive plus although response time settings are restricted for some bizarre reason. It was also disappointing to discover that grayscale performance isn't as good by default in the sRGB mode compared to the default Gamer 1 mode, which leads to worse delta E's. 
However, oversaturation is resolved, and the monitor has much better delta E averages here for saturation and color checker, though it does fall short of the delta E ITP threshold of 5 that we like to see for good factory calibration. Based on this performance, the 27GR93U's sRGB mode isn't as good as other monitors, falling behind the 27GP950, M27U, and especially the excellent M28U in grayscale. Color checker performance isn't bad, a mid-table result, though factory tuning isn't a selling point compared to other monitors. Where LG is able to offer a better experience than its competitors is in its user tuning capabilities. With unlocked white balance in the sRGB mode, you can improve this mode quite a bit to a Delta E ITP average of just 4.88 in color checker. That would put it more in the top bracket of sRGB modes across gaming monitors, most of which don't allow you to adjust settings. On top of this, we get hardware calibration support through LG's Calibration Studio software. If you have access to a colorimeter or similar hardware, you can use this software to upload calibrated settings into the monitor, which is a far better solution than using software profiles that are only supported in some apps. The results weren't perfect using my consumer grade i1 Display Pro colorimeter, but an improvement on the built in default settings. For the ultimate experience, a software calibration using Calman is the best route, after which we achieve typically excellent results, especially for sRGB as this monitor has full coverage of that gamut. For P3, only the very outer edges of the gamut aren't covered, which has a small impact of performance, but generally speaking, it's a good result overall. The 27GR93U is a bright monitor, achieving 461 nits after calibration, which is plenty for indoor usage, and much brighter than products like the Gigabyte M28U. It's a small improvement over the 27GP950 as well. Minimum brightness is not amazing though, at just 75 nits, I'd like to see that a bit lower for those that want to use this in a pitch black room. The 27GR93U's contrast ratio was a bit disappointing, achieving just 940 to 1 after calibration, which is a downgrade on the 27GP950 and M28U, though slightly better than the M27U. LG do advertise a minimum contrast ratio of 700 to 1, so from that sense the 27GR93U is accurately advertised, but I'd like to have seen this a bit closer to the typical 1000 to 1 rating that is given. The previous 27GP950 having a 24% better contrast ratio is certainly not a result I was hoping to see. Viewing angles are good here, as is panel uniformity, not a whole lot to say here, IPS glow is going to vary between units, and mine did have a small amount, but nothing I would class as a deal breaker. Final section of this review is the Hub Essentials checklist, LG does well in the first two sections, accurately advertising things like HDMI 2.1 and various color performance specs. However, I would have liked to see contrast closer to the typical figure that's listed, though it is quite a bit above the minimum. Motion performance sees the usual penalties as LG advertise a 1 millisecond response time without that being realistically achievable on average. The fastest responses are in the 1 millisecond range when tested using legacy methods, but I think the 1 millisecond claim is a bit misleading. LG also bizarrely limit overdrive options in the sRGB mode, not that this has a huge impact on the experience. LG also received penalties for advertising HDR despite this monitor not including any real HDR hardware, having no local dimming support basically makes it impossible for this type of LCD to deliver the contrast required for true HDR visuals. With that said, it sails through the issues and defects section with no problems. Like with its 32 inch brother, I come away from testing the 27GR93U reasonably impressed. Again, nothing here that's particularly groundbreaking, but performance is typically pretty good across a range of categories, and the level of features and optimization on offer is decent. I think buyers after a 4K 144Hz gaming monitor will be happy with this one from LG. This monitor delivers respectable response times, and LG have tuned it well to deliver a single overdrive mode experience with some additional setting tweaks possible for those that want the best performance. I think what LG are doing here makes more sense than only offering one or even zero overdrive settings that are usable, which we've seen with some other recent reviews. Whether you're gaming mostly at the highest refresh rate or are going to be utilizing the full variable refresh range, the experience LG are offering here is great though not notably better than similar 27-inch IPS monitors. The color performance aspects to the 27GR93U are decent as well, offering a good wide gamut experience, excellent SDR brightness, an sRGB mode that allows white balance adjustments, and hardware calibration support. I always like to see versatility in monitors, particularly those that are 4K, as I think a lot of people will be buying something like this for both gaming and productivity, and there's certainly some versatility here. With that said, I would have liked to see a better contrast ratio, one of the bigger weaknesses I found. 
The 27 inch 4K 144Hz gaming monitor category is one of the most crowded in the market right now, and there are lots of excellent deals on offer. So, how does the 27GR93U fit into this picture? Well, for those in the US, LG's bizarrely high price tag compared to other regions basically rules it out of contention. At $700, there just isn't enough on offer here compared to the Gigabyte M28U or M27U, which are both available for around $500. Now I do think the 27GI93U is better than those Gigabyte monitors. It's brighter than the M28U and offers more color tuning options than both of them, but it's not $200 better. The differences in general are quite minor. So unless the US price falls much closer to $500, I just get something like the Gigabyte M27U instead. But it's looking like a totally different value proposition in other regions. Here in Australia, you can get the 27GR93U for just $800 AU, which is actually a little cheaper than the M28U locally, while the M27U hasn't launched yet. This is a much better price and corresponds to a US equivalent of under $500, which is why I'm a bit puzzled at the inflated US price. If you are in Australia or in a region where this LG monitor is much more appropriately priced, it's a great buy and highly competitive with some of the best value 4K monitors I've tested previously. Definitely one to look out for and assess on a region by region basis. I was also glad to see LG coming out with cheaper 4K monitors this generation than in the past. Both the 27 inch and 32 inch variants are much more affordable than their predecessors, even in the US. The 27GP950 has a $900 MSRP, which just doesn't make sense in the current market given its lack of true HDR capabilities. So dropping down to even $700 is much more appropriate, and really the 27GI93U in a lot of areas is just as good. It's not the same, so depending on what you're after, the older model might have a specific feature you want, but for most gamers, the new model is the one to get. So anyway, that's it for this review of the LG 27GR93U. If you are interested in this monitor or any of the others that we've been talking about in this review, we do have links in the description below where you'll be able to check pricing, buy them, do all those sorts of things. So yeah, much appreciated if you do use those links. If you do want to support the channel, then you can subscribe and like the video or consider signing up to our Patreon and Float Planner accounts. Links are also in the description. We will gain access to some cool benefits like the ICC profiles we generate for these reviews. We've also got our Discord community BTS videos, monthly live streams, and plenty of good stuff. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.